Well, I've got two wide receivers this week, and they're at the opposite end of the spectrum. I think Calvin Johnson is the biggest no-brainer on the board this week. He's the top receiver in the game. He's priced as the top receiver in the game. And he catches a matchup, an ideal matchup, against the worst possible pass defense. Uh, in order for Calvin Johnson to be worthwhile this week, he's going to have to score 30 or more points. And that's a tall tale for most players. Not for Calvin Johnson. He's actually averaged more than 30 points over his last six games. Uh, plus, you have an opponent here um, that's weaker than any of the ones he's faced in the last six so you could easily project 30 or more points for him. The other receiver I have is Andre Holmes of the Raiders. Uh, he's at the other end of the spectrum. Um, he hadn't done anything last season. You probably never heard of him until last week. He had a great game on Thanksgiving against Dallas. Uh, he probably has one week wonder stamped all over him to a lot of people, but he had 11 targets in that game on a Raider team that's looking to identify a passing game. They've got a new quarterback. They're trying new receivers. Uh, the matchup is good, and his price is very low. Here's a guy who, if he catches one long pass, could easily justify his low price. So that's the big and the small of it. Did you mean Andre Johnson or Santonio Holmes? I, it wasn't Andre Holmes, right? <laughs> that's, that's, I had a hard time coming up with the name myself. Yeah, Andre Holmes is uh, a guy who's had one good week in his whole career, um, and that was last week. And the reason he had that big week, he said it himself. He marked that game on his calendar as a team that cut him. So he really wanted to perform well that, well that game. Um, this next week, they're playing a team that didn't cut him. So I'm not putting Andre Holmes in my lineup, no matter the price. Uh, obviously, Dave had to choose a cheap player this week to, to fit in Calvin. But if that's the price you got to pay to get Calvin is putting Andre Holmes in your lineup, you shouldn't do it. And um, before I even saw the salaries this week, I thought the same thing. I was like, Calvin Johnson is a must play. I've got to get him in my lineup, no matter what. The, the matchup is incredible. Calvin's the best player in the league right now, maybe of all time, if you ask me. But um, there, there's just, when you look at the price, it doesn't make sense. They, the, the salary makers knew that everyone wanted to do this too. And they decided, you know what, we're going to jack his price up. No one's going to want to touch him. If we make him this much more, he's like 3,500 more than the next best guys. And you can still get elite guys at the, this position for cheaper. I got three of them by you know not going with Calvin. I got Des Bryant, uh, Brandon Marshall, and A.J. Green. All of those guys are considered elite wide receivers, right? And they're 3,500 or so cheaper than Calvin Johnson. So obviously I love the players, their elite skills, and their matchups are solid too. So having this elite of a wide receiver core is pretty rare. You know, you're not going to be able to do this most weeks. I was able to field a pretty good team besides these guys. And I really like my wide receiver core. I can understand what you're saying there, but I think I can project 10 fewer points for each of your receivers than Calvin Johnson. And if I'm only paying 3,500 more, I think that's a bargain. Uh, let me take it one at a time. Des Bryant, uh, someone who has scored one touchdown his last four games. Um, Marshall is up against a team that's got a very good pass defense and a weak run defense, so I'm not sure they're going to pass as much as usual. Plus, Alshon Jeffrey, I had Marshall last week, you had Alshon Jeffrey, you were right. Um, I actually project Jeffrey to have a better week than Marshall this week as well. And A.J. Green, I'm not sure what's happened, but they've targeted him 12 total times the last two weeks. Uh, two very mediocre games. I mean, I think all three of you guys have a chance to score 20 points. I think Calvin Johnson's a lock to score 30 points. Yeah, you brought up the last two weeks for A.J. Green, but the two weeks before that, you had 15 targets and 19 targets. You know, that's more likely to happen than the, the seven and five. And even with the seven targets, he put up 19 points. You know, so if that's the bottom of the barrel, I'll take that. But did I mention uh, Calvin Johnson's 52-point game in there? Well, I mean, no, well, he, Calvin, we're not, how far back are we going? Okay, Calvin wasn't that much better than A.J. Green last week, right? They're about the same points. Um, right, right. So, but, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Brandon Marshall, here's the thing. We have a sample size of what has happened with Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey went for over 200 yards once this year. The next game, he had one catch, okay? Brandon Marshall went off the next game because they made sure, you know what, we've got two superstar receivers. We've got to keep them both happy, you know? It can't just be, okay, well, now let's just pass Jeffrey the ball now. Brandon Marshall put up 29.7 uh, points the week following Alshon Jeffrey's 200-yard receiving game. So I feel very confident about Brandon Marshall. Obviously, uh, I've, I'm a huge Alshon Jeffrey fan. I told you I was way higher in Alshon than Brandon Marshall last week. And um, it, 
if I'm going with Brandon Marshall this week, that's got to tell you something. There's good reason, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, all three guys are good. Des Bryant, you talk about um, him and that they're going to run the ball a ton, but in a game with a, a 50 point over under, I don't see most people seeing it that way. I think there's going to be a lot of passing in that game, a lot of scoring. And like you said, like we've talked about this week, the Dallas Cowboys do not have much as far as the running game goes, as far as depth. So they're probably not going to be able to run the ball 20, 30 times. Just, they just won't. DeMarco Murray can't handle that workload and they have no one else to turn to. My strategy was to, when I do my lineup, I keep flex as the last position. And I just see how much money I have left. I obviously put three star quality guys in my lineup, two running backs and one ride receiver. You put that many star quality guys in your lineup, you're not gonna have much left for flex. I didn't go into my decision there thinking, I'm gonna put a third running back or I'm gonna put a third receiver. I just happened to look for a guy in a low price range that I thought could score a touchdown. I think Mendenhall, Mendenhall was the best fit for that. Yeah, I actually do look for a third running back usually just because they're gonna get the most opportunities. Usually they're looking at touching the ball about 20 times or so, whereas receivers, they're looking at about six to 10. So I, I like the increased opportunities with running backs, and that's usually the way I go. The reason I went with wide receivers this week is just the elite options that I was able to get. You know, it's extremely rare that you're going to have uh, this type of a wide receiver core in your lineup, and I, I just jumped at the chance this week.